One of the most famous things about Pikmin is the Pikmin. They're the mascots of the series and are used for promotion and merchandise, but how many types of Pikmin are there? Well, the answer might seem obvious. There are several types of Pikmin hidden in game, lore, and other parts of the franchise. I've created a Pikmin iceberg chart that catalogs every single type of Pikmin and other Pikmin related things like the onions. This will only be covering official media and not fan-made Pikmin types. If you don't know what an iceberg chart is, they are a simple way of displaying info. The deeper topic is on the chart, the less known it is. We will be starting with the basics and ending with the very first Pikmin type ever invented. I also won't be putting in any cheesy overdone joke entries like every copy of Pikmin 2 is personalized, the Pikmin are haunted, MK Ultra don't research. So you can relax knowing you are going to receive raw Pikmin knowledge. Before we begin make sure to subscribe for high quality Pikmin videos weekly. Starting off at the sky, we only have one entry, and that is the core nine types of Pikmin. This consists of red, yellow, blue, purple, white, rock, winged, ice, and glow Pikmin. These nine types of Pikmin are the most recognizable thing in the franchise and are the center of most promotional material. If you've heard anything about Pikmin, you will probably recognize these guys, even if you haven't played the games. All of these Pikmin have defining traits, such as resistance to hazards and other special abilities. The flower system is a gameplay mechanic in Pikmin that resembles an upgrade system. Pikmin sprout from leaf, bud to flower, and each stage increases their speed. Pikmin can jump straight from leaf to flower by drinking nectar, which can be obtained from eggs and patches of grass. The colors of the buds and flowers change across the different types of Pikmin. Flowers have become another key part in Pikmin's branding as they are used as the logo in Smash Bros and are featured prominently in games like Pikmin Bloom. Onions have been featured in almost every single Pikmin game and are used as the main storage place for Pikmin. Pikmin can be brought out or in from the onion and corpses can be brought to the onion to produce more Pikmin. They have had over three different designs across the series and the Japanese website for Pikmin 4 explains this by saying the onions have different biological variants. This means that all three types of the onions coexist. There is a specific onion for each of the core nine types aside from glow no. Pikmin. The 100 Pikmin limit is a staple of the Pikmin series. You are only ever allowed to have 100 Pikmin on the field at any given time. Pikmin 4 suggests that this is a survival feature that onions have evolved to have. Pikmin 4 also builds up to the limit with you having to get a new type of onion called Flarlick. The game starts off at a limit of 20 Pikmin and collecting Flarlick eventually increases this cap up to 100. Collecting any more after that will grant the player with Nectar and Ultra Spicy Spray. Candybot Buds are a special type of flower that can be used to turn a type of Pikmin into a completely different type. Olimar suggests that they might be the next step in Pikmin evolution. These flowers are in the Candy Pop family which which also encompasses onions and flarlicks. There is a different colored flower for each of the core nine types, except for glow Pikmin. There is also another candy pop bud called the Queen Candy Pop Bud, which cycles between three different colors and gives the player an influx of Pikmin. Wild Pikmin were a concept introduced in Pikmin 2 and expanded upon in Pikmin 4. These are Pikmin that are found in the wild, in caves, and outside, and in Pikmin 4 they can be used to bycap the current flarlick limit in caves. They cannot bypass the 100 Pikmin limit, and if you bring 100 Pikmin to a cave, they will be replaced with candy pop buds. In Pikmin 2, they can only be found above ground and they serve as a slight handicap as they count towards the total Pikmin limit before you can collect them. This means for most of the early game, you'll have to have a squad of 95 controllable Pikmin. Peliposies are a common type of flower in the Pikmin series and are an easy way of gaining more Pikmin. Olimar states that they are a close relative of the Pikmin in his notes and that they are crucial in the Pikmin species survival. The number depicted on the Pelopozi matches the number of Pikmin you will receive from them. However, the Peliposies change colors, and if you don't color code with the Pikmin carrying them, you will usually be penalized with a lesser amount of Pikmin output than the number. There are colors for each of the core nine, except for the glow Pikmin. Leaflings play a key part in the plot of Pikmin 4 and resemble the humans that got turned into Pikmin. They are made by bringing a human into an onion where they get transformed into a leafling. This concept was first introduced in Pikmin 1 where getting the worst possible ending would play a cutscene of Valmar getting dragged into the onion and being turned into a Pikmin-like being. The Luminol and Glow Pellets are the Glow Pikmin's version of the Onion and Peliposies. These can only be found in Pikmin 4's night missions, and if you complete a night mission you are given Glow Seeds that can be used to spawn Glow Pikmin on command 
spend in night missions and caves. Glow Sap is a main reward you get from night missions and is produced from the Illumina. It is used to convert the leaflings back into normal humans. Olimar's no so so claim it is a key factor in producing the Smoky Prog, an offshoot of the Mamuda. Decor Pikmin are a type of Pikmin introduced in the mobile game Pikmin Bloom. They are variants of the seven types of Pikmin in Pikmin Bloom and they wear different accessories and objects. They are usually location based and going to a different location will result in you obtaining a certain set of decor Pikmin. For example, getting a decor Pikmin near a bakery will result in you getting a Baguette series Pikmin. The way you obtain Pikmin in Pikmin Bloom is by seedlings. In the usual Pikmin games, Pikmin are obtained from the Onion or in the Wild, however in Pikmin Bloom you need to collect seedlings and achieve a step goal to get Pikmin in this game. Their design showcases a Pikmin sprout in a pot. The pot usually changes colours based on the colour of the Pikmin. Boldmen are a type of Pikmin introduced in Pikmin 2 and have yet to make a return since their original debut. They resemble a red bulborb with a Pikmin leaf blooming out of it. They are a type of wild Pikmin and to obtain them you must kill a larger Boldmen to gain access to a smaller squad of them. They are immune to every lethal hazard except for explosions falling into the abyss and being crushed. They cannot be taken out of caves and are left behind when you exit a cave. This will not be the last time we'll see of them in the iceberg. Before I continue, I want to quickly give a shout out to our channel members Jikatik, Mandel, Marty Moo, Akai the Chirper, Shrimpaladl, B2 Battle Droid, Carbonated Blood, Yubel, and Johan. Their support is greatly appreciated. Puffmen are a type of Pikmin introduced in Pikmin 1, and they are the only exclusively hostile Pikmin. They are spawned via a boss fight, the Puff Stool, and have a purple appearance. They can be controlled with a glitch, however they aren't very functionable and will revert back to normal Pikmin after completing a task. Despite the Puff Stool appearing in Pikmin 4, Puffmen don't show up in that game. However, there is leftover data implying that they were intended to show up. Pikmin in the two-player battle modes that have been a reoccurring game type since Pikmin 2 often possess strange properties. The main one being their leaf and flower colour, which is changed to match the colour of which captain slash team you are playing as. There is also some stat changes to balance out the modes. Red Pikmin have their 1.5 times attack modifier nerfed to the default one time, so the red team isn't given an unfair advantage. During the final cutscene in Pikmin 1, when Olimar leaves PNF 404, an army of onions fly off with him. These onions are varying colours, and some such as orange currently don't have a corresponding Pikmin type. The color Colorings were probably random and not meant to hint at new types of Pikmin. Pick Pick Carrots are a vegetable in the Pikmin series and are what the Pikmin are named after, as Omnor found out that they closely resemble the carrots. They showed up in Pikmin 2 as a trouble object in the Piklopedia, and to get them to work properly, they are assigned a Pikmin AI. This had the after effect of playable Pick Pick Carrots being able to spawn in outside of the Piklopedia with the use of mods. They are almost fully functional and are the worst type in the game, as they resist no hazards and have no special modifiers. They also suffer the same fate in Pikmin 3, even though that game doesn't use them in the Piklopedia. They are much less functional this time and will usually crash the game. I mentioned Bulbman earlier and how they were only seen in Pikmin 2, however there are pieces of leftover game files that show they were intended for Pikmin 3 and 4. Pikmin 3 has a leftover model and concept sketches for them, while Pikmin 4 has some leftover attributes files called Gensai Control A, translating to Enemy Control A, which is most likely referring to the Bulbman or another Bulbman-like enemy. They also showed up in a promotional website for Pikmin 4 alongside Puffman. There is a glitch in Pikmin 1 that will showcase a seemingly non-existent Pikmin following you, and it often can't be dismissed. This creates the illusion that there is an invisible ghost Pikmin following you. This isn't the case though, and is likely due to Pikmin 1's subpar programming. Hermikmin, also known as Parasite Pikmin, are a type of Pikmin that were mentioned in Pikmin 2. They were described in that game as being the cause of Bulbman, as they infect a Bulborb to use as a host. Despite them being introduced almost two decades ago, they have never made an appearance, with the only potential design trait being that they might be green based on in-game hints. This concept wasn't forgotten by Nintendo, as Pikmin 4 states that Rock and Ice Pikmin are actually parasitic Pikmin using Rock and Ice blocks as hosts. Almar also claims that these parasitic Pikmin are called Hermikmin in Pikmin 4. Bean Pikmin are an unused type of Pikmin introduced in the 2014 Seminar Notebook, a prize handed out to attendees of a Nintendo event. This notebook will be covered extensively later down in the iceberg, but we will take a look at Bean Pikmin now, as they are one of the only rejected types that seem to be planned to be implemented. They are the most well-known of the rejects 
picked Pikmin from this notebook, and there is some data in Pikmin 4 mentioning them, which means that they were likely intended for Pikmin 4. Their main mechanic would have been that they would construct bridges, ladders, and ropes with themselves. They were originally planned for Pikmin Tree, and this mechanic made its way back with bridge pieces that were introduced in Pikmin Tree and replaced the series' damage-based bridges. The notebook also describes them as being parasitic, which may mean they are actually the design of the Hermikmin. Another thing unused in the files of Pikmin 4 is a green onion. This is usually assumed to correlate with the bean Pikmin, however it is also speculated that it could potentially be for the glow Pikmin due to them both being green. Errormen refer to types of Pikmin created out of pure accident. These are usually seen in promotional material for the games and are based off pre-existing Pikmin types. Some examples of Errormen are Gilless Blue Pikmin on the Hey Pikmin logo, a Red Yellow Pikmin in promotional material for the Wii port of Pikmin 1, and these two butcherings of Purple and White Pikmin. These are always made out of pure accident and usually show up in material with lower quality control. After Pikmin Tree was released, there was speculation and rumors started after brown and purple peliposes were discovered. There are no brown Pikmin in the Pikmin franchise, and purple Pikmin aren't in the story mode of Pikmin Tree, so how was this created? This oddity happened as when the Peliposes switch color, there is a frame or two where the colors get merged, creating these colors of Peliposes. This graphics feature fooled people again almost a decade later, when people reportedly saw purple pellets in the Pikmin 4 gameplay trailer. While they do exist now, this couldn't have shown up in the trailer, as there is only three types of Pikmin unlocked, and none of them are purple. Bomb rocks have changed quite a lot throughout the series, with who or what can utilize them. In Pikmin 1, the rule was that only yellow Pikmin could utilize bomb rocks, however there is a leftover content in the game file showcasing icons of red and blue Pikmin holding bomb rocks. This was likely changed for balancing reasons, as yellow Pikmin would have nothing to do if they couldn't utilize bomb rocks. There is an unused candy bot button in Pikmin 3 that instead of changing Pikmin, it actively kills them. Due to it being unused, there isn't much information about if this is an actual candy bot button or merely just an enemy disguised as one. It also doesn't have an official name either. As I mentioned earlier, the 2014 seminar notebook was given out to attendees of a Nintendo event in 2014, and a page of it showcased tons of unused and scrap Pikmin concepts that were planned for Pikmin Tree. I already mentioned Bean Pikmin and showcased the concept sketch of Bulman, but there is still so much more to break down here. Starting off, we have the two types of Pikmin that did make the light of day, Rock and Winged Pikmin. They are showcased here and listed as having the same mechanics they do in the normal games. Their designs are almost exactly the same as well. There is an orange ghost-like Pikmin which likely became the Glow Pikmin. There is any descriptions of what they would do, but we can assume they would share some of these same traits as the Glow Pikmin. There is a black fuzzy Pikmin which is described as being able to resist colder climates. This could have possibly been reworked into the Ice Pikmin, but is unsure if that is the case. This blobby blue Pikmin would have been able to fix structures with mucus. I'm unsure if this would be something like being able to build bridges like the Beam Pikmin were meant to do, or there would be some sort of building degrading mechanic the longer you played that these guys would fix. They are also described as moving slow similarly to the purple Pikmin. Speaking of the purple Pikmin, there is an extremely large fuzzy type of purple Pikmin on here. This likely would have been a replacement of the ordinary purple Pikmin that would be more balanced. It is given the traits of being big and strong, with it also being harder to reproduce, as you would need 10 pellets to cultivate one seed for it. It is also described as being efficient with building, which is probably referring to building structures like climbing sticks. There is a HP wheel drawn next to it, which may mean these types would have HP instead of dying in one shot like most normal Pikmin do, though this may just be a coincidental drawing placement. These big fuzzy purple Pikmin also had an opposite, that being the reddish seed Pikmin. They would be easy to cultivate, producing much more seeds, however they would be weaker and unable to latch onto enemies. It would also be able to stick and climb walls, which would be used for puzzles. There is this brownish Pikmin with a carapace for a head. They are given very little description on the page, but I'm guessing the carapace would have been used defensively. The final type of Pikmin is this Bulman that resembles a larger bull bear. It is shown following the captain and being able to carry the captain and the Pikmin through lakes of water. This concept was seen again in Pikmin 4, but this time as Ochi, a dog who can do everything the bull bear min is depicted doing here. There is also a few noteless sketches of onions, with this one here sort of resembling the flower lick from Pikmin 4. These are all of the designs in the 2014 seminar notebook. Knowing how many designs that they were able to squeeze into this small page, I wonder how many Pikmin concepts exist that will be forever locked into the Nintendo vault in sketch pads and notebooks. These designs are still being recycled today, as seen with Ghost Pikmin and Bulbearmen.
We are now at the final section of the iceberg and only a few Pikmin facts remain until we see the very first Pikmin type ever. Purple Pikmin were originally going to be black in Pikmin 2. This is seen in pre-release screenshots of the game where the purple Pikmin's icon is a crudely scribbled over icon of the yellow Pikmin. Many things that relate to purple Pikmin in the files of Pikmin 2 also confirm this. The internal name for the violet candy pop bud is Black Palm. This design would also match well with the white Pikmin creating a monochromatic theme. The Canistoma cordatum is a flower native to South Africa and it closely resembles the flowers Pikmin have on their head. Nintendo must have known this too as they partnered with botany company Syngenta to breed their own subspecies of the flower, which is dubbed Bacopa Cabana and was named the Pikmin flower for marketing. The flowers were selectively bred to more closely resemble the flowers on the Pikmin. The flowers were released to the public in 2002 as a marketing stunt for the game. Early in 2023, there was a pretty overlooked developed interview after Pikmin 4 came out discussing the development process around Pikmin 1. In this article, we saw many early designs and sketches of Pikmin. This is the very first sketch of Pikmin as we know them ever created. They remained similar to their modern day designs with a few differences. There was also a Pik woman, Pik children, and an elderly Pikmin. This likely means that Pikmin were originally intended to have gender differences, ages, and other things, which would line up with the original idea of Pikmin, a game where you are God, minding over a society of smaller creatures. There are several other sketches showcasing many different Pikmin types. We can see a black Pikmin with many different types of flowers on his head. This shows that there would be more flowers than just the iconic default flower. We can see a grey Pikmin using its leaf to wrap a ball to hold it, a mechanic unseen in any of the games. This is showcased alongside a lime green Pikmin balancing a spiky ball on its leaf. A blue Pikmin can be seen curling its life into a shank and stabbing a brown Pikmin, another mechanic that we have never seen. We see the familiar red Pikmin holding some sort of stake while standing next to a campfire. There are four types of brand new Pikmin showcased at the end of the sketches. The red and black Pikmin has lizard-like hands and a flame on its head, meaning that it would have likely worked with fire. There is a brownish Pikmin with some sort of rock and crystal replacing its leaf. There is these two violet and cyan Pikmin, but I have no clue what they are meant to be or what they would have done. You may notice that these Pikmin look rather eerie, and that is because it is stated in the interview that they were designed after Tim Burton's works. Anyways, at the start of this video, I promised I would show you the very first Pikmin type ever, so here it is. This is the very first Pikmin type. Now I know a lot of you are thinking the exact same thing. What the fuck is this piece of shit? I know it doesn't look that good, but it's still cool to see. It looks like something straight out of Yoshi's Island, to be honest. As I mentioned earlier, Pikmin was originally going to be a game where you helped guide a society as god, and the original title was Adam and Eve. The stuff about Pikmin being created after Miyamoto observed ants in his garden was a lie made for marketing, if you were wondering about that. These characters would be controlled via chips that the player could change on the spot in game. You could give them an attack chip to make them attack, or a defend chip to make them defend. There were also emotion chips that would change their personality. Since the game was originally going to be top down, they added these bulbs on the character's head so you could tell their personality and gender. This is probably what inspired the leaves on the Pikmin design we know and love, so there is still roots of even the oldest designs in modern Pikmin. This article isn't actually the first time we saw these guys, as they made a very small appearance on the desktop icon of the Pikmin 1's Windows version left over in the GameCube's files. At the time though, nobody knew what this icon was meant to represent, but now we know. It is crazy how this design has technically been with us since the beginning, but we never noticed. That concludes this iceberg chart. Let me know why you thought of it and if you think I should make more iceberg charts for other Pikmin related topics as well. If you enjoyed this video make sure to subscribe or a fiery blowhog will melt the iceberg.